Peace, peace, peace. This is your boy Juke Swinner with another episode of Smoke and Jokes, where we discuss today's topics while indulging in the greatest of herbal essences. Today's show is brought to you by no other damn. Fifty Shades of Grape. I mean, man. Make no mistake. It's 50 shades of grape. You know, look at that. I can't even put it back inside the jar. No. I don't want to. That one, that's actually a gift right there. All right, all right. So, um, you know, I wanted to talk to y'all real quick. This is about the birth of a slave, right? You know, they won't let you say certain words, so I, I, I refer to, the, you know, them as um, tambourines. That's, that's what I like to refer to, you know, these cheering for the, you know, for, for, for their enslaver. You know, I, I call them um, tambourines. Like you look at the little monkey and he got that little tambourine. All you got to do is wind them up and he'll go to work. And that's what I that's what I refer to. Pardon me, I'm over here looking for my um, tweezers. Right, um, so that's what I refer to as a tambourine, you know, or a bib, a black and black face. And so a lot of times, you know, you won't know the history of this, the birth of the this this um tambourine you know what i'm saying so you know like i said people might know it by different names and you know to avoid that and i don't want to debate that no more i i just came up with this you can't argue me about whether or not this is a tambourine or not that's just it you might be offended because it might be a monkey but I ain't thinking about it as a monkey. I mean, you know, I'm just thinking about it as the entertainment factor of, you know, being a, being that. They might refer to you as a monkey and, hey, you might be okay with it. Who knows? I don't know. But there is a history. That's a fact. So my thing is to present the fact and so, you know, I'll, I'll be on, um, like I said, I'll be on um, Clubhouse. And so I'll be trying to tell people, you know, about Freemasonry, meaning that they might not even know that they're in these groups or under their spell, right? So a lot of times, you know, everybody is with you up until you explain that it be the organizations right around them. You know, the groups and the subgroups and all of these things. These are the um, all Masonic groups in their dominions. You know what I mean? Like those who are um, um, caught up in it. You know what I mean? So um, this, is, this is that breakdown. This is me getting into how we even got there, how we even got to a boule, you know, uh, uh, um, Sigma Gamma Greek fraternity, how we got to, you know, um, the, the Nobu Drew Ali's and um, Marcus Garvey's and Elijah Muhammad's and, you know, um, all from out of like Prince Hall and how this is the making of a slave. Now, when I say the birth of a slave, 
I mean a rebirth because you you know you um you could have somebody physically enslaved so you in inside that physical enslavement you are already setting up their mental enslavement so now you're putting this chain on them based on deception misinformation you know letting people believe they're getting a certain thing but in reality you know they're not getting it you're gaining from it through through um through their misfortune you know what i'm saying and um i'm gonna get into it right now hold on i'm about to um i'm gonna pull up some um, like I like the way that I just set up this thing where I, like like if you ever seen my old um let's talk about Freemasonry you would see that I would have like the little you know clip but I wouldn't be here you know what I'm saying it'd just be the picture of me so you know I think I elevated from that to where now I can actually talk along with the pictures and so that way it won't be I won't have to like re-edit because that's what I did I had to make the video and then you know do a voiceover where this way I can just go straight into it uh, so um, you know I wasn't experienced in that part and um, this is just something I came across and I was like oh wait a minute this is exactly what the hell I was looking for um, oh yeah I'm just looking for my blunt bills, as y'all know we don't do the Dutchess. We will not be a slave to the Dutch. And I'm damn sure ain't calling you my master. You know what I mean? So, um, what happened with this was is I was on Clubhouse. And while I was on Clubhouse, you know, I think I, I kind of changed the pace of a lot of the, um, the, the urban rooms who you know, um, profess this teaching and learning type of a thing, but it was really just all unnecessary debating. You know what I'm saying? The chicanery, keeping people distracted. So, you know, I was one of the people that came in under Maroon Nation. You know, I'm one of the people that came in and was just basically calling dudes out for just, you know, it's like no matter when I'm logging in, it seems like you're here which ain't the problem, I don't give a fuck, it's your rap. But it seems like you are, you know, an agent of conflict because, and you're making everybody else look like they're confrontational, but you'll notice that there's always that one person that jumps in with the, you know, with the, with the BS. And I don't mean, you know, in disagreements because you might not understand. That's people's lack of um, ability to educate. Like, you know, and, and I'm going to show you what I mean by that through this making of a slave. You know, because all of that, pardon me, I was over here looking for my, um, my, my pack so I can re-lock it down. All right? So, okay, I'm about to bring up um, this this um, this picture, All right? Now, if I um, if I if I need to zoom in on anything, I will um, be pressing and overlaying. You won't be able to see me most of the time, but you will be able to get a close up of what I'm talking about. Okay. So. The other day, I, I, I was talking about the footsteps. You know, like if you look at the feet, you could be able to spot the Freemasons. Now there's other things that would be telltale signs and you'll start noticing as I go on, not just the nest, part of me. You know, um, you'll notice as I go on, but not just in this picture, you might have to come back to it because I won't, I won't um, be pointing it out in this um, because I need these these topics for you know other ones you know and I don't really do this for the um, the likes or anything like that so I'm not really concerned if somebody you know takes this information and um, still puts it out there I, I don't mind you know what I'm saying but I would appreciate it if you let it be known where you got it from 
You know what I'm saying? Don't steal my information. And um, because my thing is, at least if you let it be known, if you might be a little um, misinformed, at least, you know what I'm saying, we could build on it. So I don't really have a problem with anybody using the information. And, you know, well, I, I might have a problem with you using it if you're not using it, you know, for the liberation of the people. Um, but I don't mind if you're using it, you know, for that purpose of educating and informing. Um, so I don't, you know, it's not really that I need any, any title, or anything. Like I don't really care. I just want to make sure that, you know, for the people who are putting it out there, but putting it out there wrong, you know, hearing a little piece of what you're saying, and not really watching all of them and putting it together to make the full understanding, which I'll do eventually. But first, I got to give you all of the aspects, and now I think I'll be able to pump it out more um, readily, you know what I mean? Said I'm not a fan of the wet blunts, but I am a fan of the tight lit, tight road blunts. So you'll see me pull it in. One day I'll probably give it like a real class on how I roll my L's. You know what I mean? You know, because I feel like, you know, my L's are, are beautifully rolled. You know, I'm saying going to say they're the spliffies. These are my L's, though. You know? One day I'm gonna actually learn how to roll with paper. You know? But anyway, yeah, let me get into this. Put this aside real quick. All right. So, um, forgive me if you see like a little, I'm wearing the white. As you notice, I always try to wear the black because um, less reflection. I'm wearing, I'm using a green screen, so white is gonna be the most reflective. That's why you might see a little parts in the background there. That's why you always see me try to stay in like the dark color and usually black is the easiest. So if you're ever wondering, that's why. Um, and especially since I got a light so close to me, it's gonna reflect um, that much more high higher. But anyway, um, let's see here. Um, the picture right here that we're gonna get into is, like I said, the birth of a slave. So if you pay attention to the feet, you would take a close look, right? We will notice that, you know, once again, it's on this thing called the square, right? Now, it might, might, might not be as um, intact right there, so let me go on to the next one, right? And as you can see, more clearly what I'm describing to you. You know what I mean? So now wherever you looking, hold on, let me um bring myself back up. Now as you looking, right, let me um um see if I can bring this back. Alright. So now as you looking you would understand what I'm saying about standing this this phrase standing on your square once you hear that phrase understand that you are dealing in freemasonry whether you want to or not that's the thing you it's un unbetting upon you because it's through suggestion meaning that you hear something so much you start embedding it into your life so if you hear standing on your square and ten toes or any of these phrases and you you start emulating that you might not understand if you're being indoctrinated or not you understand what i'm saying so um let me let me slide through um this picture i already showed you the last one all right now i showed you this one but now let me explain, well, let me put this on um, keyboard over here. Um, okay. Now, bamboozled, right? 
when when somebody is bamboozled let me bring this up to bamboozle all right definition now to deceive by underhanded method boop hoodwinked or I got bamboozled by the salesperson to buy a more expensive model. To call to confuse, frustrate, or throw off thoroughly or completely. Huh. Right? And I asked actually, and I read from the Marion um, Webster, my fault. So I should have pulled up the um, other one because I don't want to have you jumping around to different ones. Right? So, hold on, um, right, hold on a minute here. So, it, it, you know, cause, well, I forgot where I pulled the, cause the clip that I got right there, the, the um, the picture that I got actually comes from a, a different, um, source. I'm sorry for that. But, um, so basically you understand to bamboozle somebody, right, to, cause confusion and frustration now if you ever on clubhouse you, and you listening to these black so-called progressive conversations especially when majority of it is the youth right you hear a lot of um misinformation and you will see usually some elders there who are the, the facilitators of this misinformation. Like, yeah, you know, ask the whole head, you know, you know what I'm saying? So they're usually the facilitators of this misinformation, right? So that's what bamboozled is, right? So now we got hoodwinked, right? Let's go into hoodwinked, right? Hold on, pardon me here. keep trying to give me the movie <laughs> you know what I'm saying they keep trying to give me the movie I don't want the movie man stop trying to give me the movie man I don't want the movie let's get to the hoodwink definition hoodwink to deceive by false appearance people who allow themselves to be hoodwinked by such promises blindfold or to hide right so now when we think about, um, um, let me see if I can pull this up on my, um, my what's the name here, right? Hoodwinked, all right, take this down. So we got the hoodwinked, right? So with that being said, we understand it's to deceive, right? To make you believe something. So let's say something like, January, not a January, um, Juneteenth, a day that really technically doesn't exist, exist because tenth is not a day nor a number. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's impossible to find a day because the number doesn't exist. It's a collaboration, right, of words, right? So, right there, you have been fooled and tricked and led astray. You know what I mean? So. That's, you know, a problem within itself. You know what I'm saying? But we will, we will act like we don't see these things because they'll bombard you with it. And that's where I'm going to get into right here. So let me bring back down, you know, um, this. And let's go through another clip here where... Right, okay, and it's talking about what? Matter of fact, let me bring this on the large scale. Right? This is the Jewish slave trade of Africans. Yes, that's what we will be talking about. Right? This is what we will be talking about. 
right? So in that, hold on a minute, might have to bring this back a bit here. Um, take it to six. All right, no, no. Hold on. Okay, yeah, so we come here, right? And let's go. So as you will notice right here, I brought up a picture of going, you know, into, you know, into the hole of the shit, right? If you know anything about the story of, of, um, of Prince Hall, you know that he was eavesdropping from under this little thing and he was listening. So the symbolism within that was to keep us in uh, uh, digging up our past. You know, we our history is basically buried. So to keep us distracted, they would give us you know, the history, and if you do anything, you know, any research into Rosetta Stone, I'll get into all of this, you'll understand the, the, um, the washing of that and keeping us entrenched into that. You understand what I'm saying? And so with that, we, um, we, we, like it's like taking the okay eastern stars as well to give you another example eastern stars you know the female organization but when you talk to the female organizations right they'll tell you about spirituality and vibrations and if you notice it's stuff and you know although it's moving from this um heaven right but it's still this you know these you know, the ancestors in the sky, it's still up there. It's keeping you in. So that's, if you ever wondering the different organizations and how they're geared, they're sticking to a script based on this. And this is how they're able to identify each other. So, if, you know, if she's like, up, you know, up as up and then below. And, you know, they'll say these little things to let each other know that they're Freemasons and, you know, Eastern stars or whatever. So it's on you after that to accept the fact that they're running this game on you or do you run them out? This is why I'm showing you this so you can understand that they're, you know, the manipulation that's being placed upon you. So... Let's go into the now I'm gonna get more graphical into this stuff as I go on. But in order for it to make sense, I would have to since Freemasonry works through storytelling, in order for me to break it down, I'd have to give it to you in the fashion in which they're delivering the story to perform on you. Right? So um let's go to the next clip right and now you come naked or you know strip bare of everything right and so now if you pay attention you will see these ropes around them right and so they, they're called cable toes and so one would not understand that when I tell them that the Freemasonic Lodge is, is the representation of the vagina. The symbol of the Freemason law of Freemasonry is a vagina. So the representation of the lodge is a vagina. Meaning that there's only one way in, one way out. You don't know the happenings within it, just like the birth and for whatever that comes out. Now, whatever comes out would be any of these organizations that, you know, was born from that you know, learned how to implement these things within their organization and then they're free to go out and, you know, complete their mission because they got enough members and all of that and now they know how to go about it and perform the task on people, right? So, now, with that, the reason why I mentioned uh, the, the cable toe is in, in it being a vagina, the cable toe represents 
the umbilical cord, right? So, you know, I'm actually giving you a whole new show right here on, you know, the initiation part and all of that, but I'm going to just get into this in order, because remember, we're talking about the birth of a slave, so I'll break that down, what I'm saying, but for now, just to give you a clear view of you being, them being initiated into this new world, this world of opportunities and things like that but you have to work for us so you think about the Ku Klux Klan and you know burning down the churches but why would the Klan need to wear hoods at that time why because somebody within the church was going back and telling Massa what was going on and he needed to be hidden and as long as everybody was under it you wouldn't know he was the one pointing out Jeffro and this person and saying they're the troublemakers so you wouldn't know because think about it there's no other reason for the clan to have the wear hoods they drinking people out and burning down whole fucking towns because you might have did something they didn't need the wear hoods man the hoods was for the agents you know what I'm saying so um when you when you see the cable toe right so now they're burning these people into this system, you know, this Jewish system of like a cabal, secrecy, you, you know, and you'll learn that, you know, through their manipulations, how many people are under it. And so once the person figures out that they was actually a part of it, they usually um, go into the lodge and see you know, how could they benefit from it instead of being benefited off of, you know what I mean? So, you know, that's how it works. Usually, you know, somebody was a predator on you, you passed the predator and um, the, how you say, um, pyramid scheme, you passed the, the pyramid scheme down because, you know, you want to get yours back or whatever, who knows, man. Um, so then let's go into the next clip, right? Which is, aha, this people is why we are here. It's called a slave collar, right? So wow, we, we all know of Willie Lynch, the Willie Lynch, you know, story, the Willie Lynch syndrome, right? The making of a slave. Now, what people don't understand is, is it alludes to this story right here, which means that they lifted the chains off of you physically, right? But they enslaved you with the desire of the American dream through those who felt superior of saying they were already free or whatever the case may be light skin whatever whatever way that they implement the um the classation because that's how that's like one of the greatest tools of racism outside of bigotry you know outside of bigotry racism is the um the biggest you got you know what I'm saying? That, that, um, well, you know, everybody, you know, um, yeah, so that's how you got, I'll get into the other part. But, so with this collar, right, they were able to take you from a change but hoodwink you into believing you were free because a whole new system was set up for you. This whole new system. So everything that you would be chasing and believing would be for you to remain the cattle and them to profit here. This is how they 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 designed it. You know, it's by design. Mason Dixon line. You know what I'm saying? So, um as we go on, let me as a matter of fact, let me give you a, a, a closer look. Right? Now if you look right here. Right, and this is how come the free, the, how come the the Jews are mentioned. If you look up on top, you will see 
um, Goldstein, Levitt, and um, Bell, Bell, I don't, I'm sorry, I, don't, I never really got a chance to see what the last person, person's name was. But it's telling you what they got. Mules, such what he say, something in the beginning, mules and lovely niggers and such and such, right? Slave breeders, 1855, Atlanta, Georgia, right? So now that you, you know, you, 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 um, you see that. But I wanted to, you know, like I said, some of this is going to require me to zoom in for you so you to get a better look, right? So now, let's go to the next clip, right? And let's get into this, right? Now, we're going to, um, because I'm going a, I'm to a, um, go into this with you. It goes, um, hold on, let's bring it up to the um, four, right? It goes, American Colonization Society, right? The American Colonization Society, originally known as the Society for the Colonization of Free People of Color of America, was founded in, what's that? 1616 by Robert Finke, right? and encourage and support the migration of free African Americans to the country of Af or the continent of Africa, right? So, to understand what the scheme is taking place here, right? If you are going to stay in America, you're going to go through hell. So let's, and you know, they wanted to dwindle the numbers, right? And this is where I, I address the Eidos and all of them because they are not necessarily privy or care about this information because their job is to cause confusion. I, I don't know as an organization, but damn sure the members <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know they hide under an umbrella, so you can't say the organization. You don't know who set. I don't know who set up the organization as an individual. I don't know what they did. So I just know what your minions are out there doing, and all they're doing is causing confusion, right? So, what this organization that was set up? And right, let me bring this back up for you, right? Now, what this organize organization that was set up, right? Um, they came to the conclusion of removing the people from the land because they felt that it would be um, better. You know, because you got to remember you had the Haitian War, you had um, a lot of revolts, not just Nat Turner, but you had, you know, Nat Turner and, you know, you had these situations. Now, with these situations, white right, America was like, listen, we can't have y'all, meaning, you know, the slave owners, the big dogs, right? We can't have y'all, you know, keep breeding these fuckers, us, you know what I'm saying? And they're getting rowdy, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like you sending wild dogs out and, you know, like a, um, um, what do you call that? Like where you, where you take a, a species from an outside area that is that is foreign to like it has no and you bring it in because you're trying to um get rid of a insect or a rodent or whatever the case and next thing you know it takes over and that becomes the problem so they saw us like that like wait a minute you know, in their inbreeding, so you're bringing them, you know, like you're breeding them right here. And that's another problem when you hear with the Eidos, they'll talk about X amount of ships and overlook the inbreeding and all of that other stuff. So, um, you know, in, in, you know, the breeding of the slave in within the country, not having to outsource and get it from out, they, they was just doing it in house. So, you know, you're overlooking that when you think about population and how they decided how to remove us 
from the land. So you had this society, you know, um, a part of the abolitionists who um, who um, wanted to supposedly end slavery, but they also wanted to get your ass out of here. You understand what I'm saying? So it wasn't in for your interest that they did this. You know, so then, um, um, but all of these situations is actually playing a part to um, different stories. So I'm really trying to stick to the brainwashing, and I'm going to get to that. But, I, you know, in order to do that, you got to bring in these other elements where you got to, um, where I'm going to have to give care to, you know, and, and um, focus on to give a better understanding even in that field. So. Um, once again, I'm going to bring up this, um, this collar, right? Now, when you look at the collar, right? And now, mind you, this collar right here is from Tennessee. Um, but it says dark niggas, right? Then it says um, not, I guess those are the people, um, something more and not, right? And now, um, and then you see the let's um, up top. That's from another. These all, mind you, these all Masonic, I mean, um, Jewish names. So a lot of people don't realize that Freemasonry is a Jewish construct, right? And so when you look at the Freemasonic symbol right there, you'll see, you know, it's on there to let you know that. They're performing a new task. They're retraining. You know what I'm saying? And the, and the Masons was doing the training of the slaves. So, um, right? So, hold on a minute. Um, I don't know what happened there. Um, on my deck. But, um, yeah, so let me, pardon me. I thought I took myself back down. Here we go. So, um, now let's go into a next pick right here, right? When I why did it? I thought it had a um, thought I had more pictures than that in there. Um, let me see some. Oh no 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 hold on. Um, right. So now we come here. Let's go to. To the play. I got that eight. Uh, oh no! So I gotta, I gotta actually put some more pictures up because what? Um, hold on. I can actually pull it up through my um, my file over here. Just gotta do it a different way now. Thought I had this all fixed up. All right. Um. So give me one second, people. Forgive me. Forgive me. Um, but I'm a, I want to I wanna really show you this right here. So let me go into my hoodwinked files. All right. Um, go into my wisdom. To that. And let's see if you can see it through this right here. Okay, let me take this away. Right now, as you can see up top right here, right, this is um, Jackson, um, what is this, Alberta, Dawes, and Jackson, right? And this is what company? This is Atlanta as well. Yeah, so, you know, we had, like, as you can see up top, you see the Masonic symbol. So even when it was different companies, they were still all operating under this Freemasonic premise. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's when I had the pictures up here, you know, showing you this stuff. Um, like I said, the bamboozled. Let's see here. Right. Boom, boom, boom. And this is really what I wanted to show you these um, um, these other like you see right here, trickery. The key thing right here is chicanery. Right, to rig, to fetch, you know, to shift, to um, confidence, trick. You got to understand the hoax, to swindle, right, to deceive. 
right? And I know Malcolm X done already, you know, um, did his, his thing, but what I'm saying is I think a lot of people might not understand that he was being bamboozled by a group himself. You know what I'm saying? So they'll actually inform you of something while performing the, the task on you. So I wanted to get into, once again, let's get into um, Hoodwinked, right? Where, once again, you could see, you know, the hoax, the gold, the cousin, the sharp, the fool, right? Dupe, outwit, fool, all of these, you know, um, things that when you when they all they was always alluding to as far as Freemasonry. So the trick that was being played was being put on you. You know what I'm saying? So um you will or at with the thinking was is you will be sold. You know what I'm saying? So they was they was um Redesigning slavery, and you still might miss it, so let me go on just a little bit more past this. Okay, here we go, right? Um, right now, don't pay attention to what's underneath, pay attention to the imagery and what Freemasonry professes to do to get you to walk up right to make to erect a man of you you know what i'm saying and that's why when you hear a lot of these urban um group though still refer to like white things as calling you a savage and you know and and these type of things within the lessons because these were the things that they were going to use as trigger words and make you feel uncomfortable within yourself like say if you watching the news and they're calling you and they're saying savage but you know the the lessons when all of that is calling people savages and this that and the third you're going to associate yourself with having to get in line because that's what the training is to to get you to fall in line You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you, if you look at your free base, you will understand what I mean about when they say about, you know, erecting you and stuff of this nature. So, you know, we went into the picture, and like I said, you see the, the cable toes on him, you know, around his neck, and they tell you that it's binding, you know what I'm saying? But those cable toes is the umbilical cord. So you are bound to this, this system, you know, through your birth, your rebirth. You know what I'm saying? So you were born now into this, you know, this system and you can prosper if you do these things. So right there alone, you could see the eagerness of a lot of um, black people, especially at that time, you know, because they see this opportunity. The same way that they do it in the, um, the, the schools with the sororities and the fraternities and, you know, their, their hazing and all of that. That's the same thing. All of that is a part of Freemasonry. It's the same tactics. So it's to get you to fall in line. You understand what I'm saying? Especially within the black community. Because you don't see the black, they'll tell you about black excellence and, you know, being this spending power, but it's not within creating. It's about within keeping up with the Joneses and convincing you to always do that if you look at it. You know, a lot of people, they don't want to face that fact when they tell you the part about, um, you know, um, being able to to um, be this spending power and all of this stuff. So let me give you a, a better look at this, right? So, um, hold on, maybe I got to zoom back a bit. Um, all right. We really don't need to see the hand, but 
Yeah, you can see right here, you can see the um the cable tow again. You see the wrapping. So like I said, and once you understand that full concept of being born again and, you know, coming into this place without nothing, you know, but now you're gonna make all of this, you know, like this, and so this is the initiation into Judaism, but as a servant. You know what I mean? As a servant. That's what you just bitted yourself to. Being a servant to. You're thinking something different, I understand, but that's not what's taking place here. You have you have signed on to do their bidding, right? And now, as you can see once again, hold on, let me zoom in. Right? Two things I want you to take notice to, right? I want you to take notice to the slumping, right? What is he doing, right? He's he's slumping, so he's gonna be taught to stand up right. And I want you to pay attention to the feeding. Like I told you again um, about this, part of me. Let me reach over here, get this um, part of me real quick. Um, yeah, so, um, how to get an ashtray? Yeah, so, you know, pay attention to the feet. Pay attention to what it's, what it's portraying and pay attention to imagery. Because Freemasonry works less off of what is being said. That's why when you see the books, it, 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 it tells you things, but it's, it's vague where most of it is working off of stories. So what I'm giving you is the translation, right? And because, you know, if you know anything about Judaism, it works off of um, written and oral translation. So when you hear people telling you this, um, this written translation of the... Um, of the Judaism, you know, which would be basically an add-on of Christianity, or Christianity would be an add-on. So there's there's an oral story, and in this oral story is how they gain their wealth. You know what I'm saying? What is the story of the places that they bid? The other is how they gain their wealth there. And if you read the Bible, you would understand that. So um, let me go into this next one right here. Hold on a minute. I can't go into I make this the regular size. Like I, said, I use it on my what's your name here. But now, okay. Now, if you know anything about Freemasonry, again, you know about the ruffians who beat up basically Hiram um, to steal the information. Now, the ruffians would be the Freemasons in this regard. To kill you of any logic, they will run up on you and bombard you with bullshit. That's their task, to keep you distracted. They don't have to physically harm you. They're just gonna say, all they gotta do is keep you in confusion. And that could also mean to lead you in that, like say if I, um, I pop up with kilos and this, that, and the third, now I can make the money off it, but at the same time, I'm setting people up for all type of chaos and mayhem to ensue. That's how this works, you know. My and I'm not saying that you don't, um, you know. There's no getting your hands dirty because, and you know, these are these are brutes, you know, ruffian. So of course, there's gonna be that element. That's who you look for. You know what they say? Um, like Clarence X went to Brooklyn because you know Brooklyn was a rougher place where they say you know um, go to Medina with the gods of Mina. You know what I mean? So if you're gonna build a foundation, you know that's why when you think of you know the gang elements here yeah, came out of the Bronx, but um, a large uh, um, majority of that control was really like a Brooklyn thing. 
You know what I'm saying? And not saying that that was Masonic right there, but the um the proof of this, you know, this ruggedness and you know Brooklyn is rugged. That's just what the fuck it is. You know what I'm saying? You can't fucking deny that. So you know th that's what you know that whole concept is. So. You know, you get the biggest, the strongest, or whatever, the smartest, any of these elements of of being able to dominate and conquer the um the logic and thinking of people, whether like I said, it could be through brute force. Yeah, what you gonna like like when you hear them promoting the snitching. But what you gonna do about it? Such and such is a gangster. You what you gonna do? You gonna run up on him, you know what I'm saying? All of this, that. So, you know, they're basically telling you they 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 winning by this this brute force tactics, and if you are cowardly, you gonna fall forward. But then they're doing cowardly acts by working for you know the the um, oppressor. They they the you know hey boss, watch the gun line. Those are those. We, like I said, in this actions right here, there's many different elements. You know what I mean? So um, when you look right here, you'll see that, um, you know, like I said, it's Atlanta, Georgia. You know what I'm saying? Um, now maybe y'all can get a better look. Maybe you could see it's, um, um, it look like Goldstein, Levitt, and... Um, Ber, Berlimi, Ber, Bandy. I don't know. It's look like a M R Y right there at the end. So I'm gonna have to really um, put it through my um. What's the name? Let me see. Um, see if we could probably see it a little bit more here. Um, that's B I R. Um, see right there. That's where I'm getting confused. But I know that's a B A. And then we got a D right here, right? So whatever, but we know that, um, oh, I can just scroll that way. Um, so we know that um, the Jews is playing a part. And if you know anything like about Freemasonry, like I said, once you enter the Red Lodge, you, you know, the um, Royal Arts degree, you learn, you know, the introduction into um, Judaism. You know, you, you go into the shrines to, to indulge in, you know, the um, Islam. But for the most part, you know, they're dealing with Christianity and um, 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 Judaism. You know what I'm saying? But they will attack Christianity because there's a sect that breaks off into that, which is once again controlled by the white man regardless you know what I'm saying or the Jews should I say we 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 kind of like um associate the Jew with the white man as if you know they all encompass and it's not necessarily like that um all right so then we go here let me um zoom in again I'm not sure if y'all got a chance to see it the last time but um hold on um, right now, as you see, once again, you see the Freemasonic symbol, you know, you see these people's name, right? You, if you know, and that's, and that's another reason why they went about the, um, the action of changing names in America, meaning that, um, you know, the change of name in America basically to hide your identity because you like you they say oh you was getting teased because you was um irish so you couldn't call yourself for larry or you know an italian name you know bruno because you know you so they they was forcing everybody to change their names but in reality they were changing they needed a way to hide themselves so now they are hide right in, in, in plain sight and go by these names and you won't know that they're hiding within your community, right? And so when we look at these, um, you know, these images, we, we see that 
um, this is down, mind you. I'm gonna close out here on this, right? And I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna actually pull up some articles. You know what I'm saying? I just closed it out because I you know, have my um, files open. Now, remember we looked up the name from Levitt from the, the collar. So I took the time to search him up. Here we go. We got Daniel Clinton Levitt, right? There it goes, a life summary of Daniel um, Clinton, right? When Daniel Clinton Levitt, Levitt was born, no, yeah, yeah, was born in 1843 in Parkersburg Wood, West Virginia, United States. His father, Daniel Clinton Lovett, was 31, and his mother, Emily Grace um, Lockhart, was 26. He married Elizabeth um, Shepinson, um Hutchinson on 7 March 1871 in Parkersburg Wood, West Virginia, United States. They were parents of at least five sons and one daughter. He lived in Wood, Virginia, United States in 1851. He died on September 14th 1916 in Charleston, Kim, um, Kawan, no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, listen, I'm sorry. I ain't from there. Have this place even still exist? <laughs> you probably should change your fucking name. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, right? Um, um, uh, West Virginia, United States, um, at the age of 73, right? But Oh, I got some music playing. Got they got the um the meet our meet us right. So let's go into world events. They say it's eight of them. Lump Lumpkins Jail in 1844 when Robert Lumpkin bought land in January. This would be the spot of the infamous slave jail of Lump. Um, Lumpkins, Virginia. The slaves would be brought here during the slave trade until they were sold. Lumpkin had purchased the land for his own slave business. Uh, so, right now we're gonna, now as you see, remember we read the names and how these people were associated to the slave trade and business. That's the reason why, <laughs> you know, was popping up with him associated with it, right? Now, um, U.S. acquires vast tract of Mexican territory in wake of Mexican war, including California and New Mexico. Abraham Lincoln issues a Mancoplation proclamation declaring slave um, Confederate states to be free, right? Then it says, um, then it says, Arlington Cemetery, boom, Chinese, and, um, and Confederate soldiers, um, assassination um, no this is on um, my fault a lot of this stuff right here but the 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 1844 is is what he's associated but i guess they you know bring up different things let me see what they have here okay um jonah mason love it of massachusetts ohio was born march 3rd january 31 and you know, um, Parkersburg, West Virginia, son of Daniel C. And then I put on boom. His grandfather was a native of London County, Virginia. His son immigrated 
to Adams County in 1835 and emerged in teaching until 1838. In that year, he returned to Virginia and married Emily Lockhart, daughter of Jonah Lockhart and sister of Judge T.J. Lockhart. He and his wife located to at Pitts um, Parks, Parkerburg, where they reared a family of seven children. To wit, our subject and his twin sister, Nanny, who married Matthew H. Hale of Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Lucky deceased, Daniel C. Um, West Virginia, Harry deceased, boom, 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 was elected county survey in Wood, West Virginia. He held the office continuously until his death, February. Our subject received his education in the Academy of Parkersburg, um, conduct and John C. Nash at the age of 16. His entire um, um, 16, he entered the drugstore of A.N. Williams and remained there until his majority from him. He was a steamboat clerk, clerk on. Ohio River, he was a clerk on um, um, Guayo Valley Bank, boom, boom, boom. He removed, he removed to the farm of Monroe, Adam, where he remained there until Monroe um, Township. He served the township clerk member. He removed Manchester, boom. He, um, he was removed to Manchester, where he had resided ever since. He is now a bookkeeper. Well, I don't know fuck is this. This doesn't make sense. Um, Stephen, um, Mary, boom, boom. Okay, this is not the um same guy from over there. Now I just said something. Okay, you know what it is? I got this this um part of the thing from um I guess like something where it popped up. Well, I know this is the guy right here, but. Um, I don't know, it's like giving me different pieces of history collected to um um see right here. It's supposed to be him right here. I don't know how this this site work. I just typed on this one right here. So let me move on. Now Lincolnia, right? Now if you remember I brought up the picture. Hold on, let me um bring these guys back over. All right. Um, right. Okay. So let me bring these guys down. Okay. So as you remember, I brought up the American Colonized Society, right? And so I'm going to show you the connection between the two, right? Laconia was the name of a purpose cent um, Central American colony suggested by Republicans, United States Senator Samuel um, Pomaro of Kansas in 1862, after U.S. President Abraham Lincoln asked the Senate uh, asked the Senator and the United States Secretary of Interior. Um, Caleb Smith to work on a plan to resettle. Right, let me bring that up. Resettle. See, now here we go. American Colonization Society, originally known as the Society for Colonization of Free People of Color of America was founded in 1816 by Robert Finley and encouraged and support the migration of free Ameri African Americans to the continent of Africa. The reason why I say this is, is hmm, when we give praise to Marcus Garvey, who was a Freemason, who was working 
in conjunction with these people and once they can't use you no more they throw you to the wolves that's why you'll see like the dr yorks and all of them they are freemasons and once they get to a certain level and they don't need them they throw them to the wolves they reveal that what they were doing and now they can go you understand what i'm saying that's just how it works um, or until somebody exposes them and then, you know, you still ain't needed no more Then they can just bring that person up and say, yeah, here we go. Since his early public career, Abraham Lincoln supported the American Colonization Society and a controversial group whose goal was to remove the, the removal of free blacks from the United States. That was their goal. So like I said, when you hear Abraham Lincoln, you know, and when you, well better yet, when you hear the Marcus Garveys and all of them, understand that they was all in cahoots to, to do this. Now, I'm not saying, because I'm gonna get into, there was some people who resisted, but that's how we had this strife within America, you know, the should we leave us and should we stay us. You know what I'm saying? Um, it says, um, Blacks United States, um, starting in the 19, let me make sure I can see this up. Here it goes, okay. Starting in the 1920s began settlements of West Africa that would eventually unite to form Liberia, S similar to, let me see, to Laconia, the name of Liberia's capital, Monrovia, was derived from the name of the fifth president of the United States James Monroe. So, even Liberia, they had their grips in it. And as anybody knows, Liberia right now is in turmoil because they have decided to run out the Freemasons, who actually helped found that nation along with Cameroon and others. Right. Do your research on this, people. Do your research on these organizations and understand the problems that they cause within that nation. Right. So let me get into it right here. Right. Lincoln desired to return former slaves to Africa or other tropical regions with their consent and the accord of the authority of the country where they were to be settled. He repeated his support for colonization numerous times, including during the Civil War. So, when we take a Abraham Lincoln, do we think of a man who wanted to free the slaves or did he just want to clear us out while um, even in the playing field for white people but saving some well he really didn't want none of us there so and I'm going to get into that right now right give me one second pull up this um this right here right let me see um um if you can see it all right, I want to make sure you can see it, my fault. Um, let me see. I'll put it up on the, um, the purples. Let me just see if I'll put it on this one. Okay. Now, I'm not, now you're not, you might not be able to see the whole thing because it's actually leaning over to the side, but I'm going to still bring it up nonetheless. Um, okay. Right? Oh no, actually you could probably see it. Okay, so it says, Lincoln acknowledged, um, acknowledged this was, wait, wait hold on, I'm, I'm way down, that's why what it is, okay. It says, Lincoln to slaves, go somewhere else. 
right? Now, this is the National Archive. Pieces of history. If you know anything about the National Archive, you know, it's the U.S. National. This is, like, not something that you just, you know, somebody putting up on the Internet. This is, you know, stuff that has been saved, you know, for history that, everybody deemed to have so unless everybody decided to lie on abraham lincoln and they pulling out letters and all of this stuff this is what he fucking said basically go somewhere else right now let me go into this the issue of slavery divided the country under Abraham Lincoln's presidency, right? The national argument was simple. Either keep slavery or abolish it. But Abraham Lincoln, known as a great emancipator, right, um, may have also been known as the great colonizer when he supported a third direction to the slavery debate. Move Africans somewhere else. I tell people this all the time. You know, I tell people that, you know, Abraham Lincoln did not free the slaves, nor did he have any desire to, um, to deal with them. It was it was economics. It had nothing to do with the people. They were just simply cattle to them so that whole Abraham Lincoln was black and listen, get your history right, right? But this ain't about Abraham Lincoln per se. It's about a movement that, you know, basically is Freemasonry, right? Long before the Civil War in 1854, Lincoln addressed his own solution to slavery at a speech delivered in Pereira, Illinois. I should not know what to do as to the exiting institution of slavery. My first impulse would be to free all the slaves and send them to Liberia. So they was already setting up Liberia, right? Because Liberia wasn't there yet. They was trying to convince people to get there, right? To their own native land. Unless, um, Liberia, you know, matter of fact, Liberia was the land that, because one of them, they basically formulated the land, and, and one of them was already there, and they just basically occupied the land, you know? Um... So, um, um, their own native land. While Lincoln acknowledged this was logically impossible, by the time he assumed the presidency, the civil war was underfoot. The nation was in such distra um, uh, the, the rest, okay, my fault, the rest, that he tried it anyway. Mm. So let's get into this. Early, by early 1861, Lincoln ordered the secret trip to modern-day Panama to investigate the land of the Panamanian named Amber Rose Thomas. Thomas, who Thomas had volunteered his um, Cherokee land as a refuge for free slaves. The slaves would work in the abandoned coal mines in his, on his property. The coal would be sold to the Navy and the profits would go to the free slaves to further build their, to build up their new land. Now, if you don't hear the bullshit within that right there, you're crazy. This is somebody's land. They're sending, they're basically transferring slaves. They were basically selling him these these people to work his mind and he's gonna get paid. You know, they're setting up a contract for him and everything. <laughs> you know, that shit is crazy. You know, you know what I'm saying? You gotta pay attention to, to this shit here. Lincoln thought 
to test the idea on, on the small slave population in Delaware. But the idea met fierce opposition by abolitionists when it went public. In April 1862, Lincoln was still in the mid of the of that emancipation and deportation was the key to a peaceful United States. He supported a bill in Congress that provided money. When it says provided money um, to be ex, um, expended under the direction of the, the presidency of the United States to aid in the colonization and settlement of such free persons of African descent now residing in said district, including those to be liberated by this act as may desire to immigrate to the Republic of Haiti or Liberia, the United States as the presidents may determine. Hmm. So, as you can see, there was a plan hatched, right? Look at the dating. The Freemasonry, you know, college and all of that was still while slavery was in effect. The same way they're setting up people today for a new system, they set us up for a system of that time. You know what I'm saying? They set us up, lined us up, you know, trained us to be obedient. You know what I'm saying? And if they, they, um, suspected disobedience to um, our um, tellings, they would handle those situations accordingly, if you understand what I'm saying. And that still happens today, you know, but now they train you after a while to just do it. You know what I mean? So that's the difference. It's like, it's like the easy pass. They'll introduce you to the easy pass in one way, and next thing you know, all of those benefits and all of that shit go out the window because they got everybody doing it. And they use one place as an example to do it nationwide. You know what I mean? So now, like, an easy pass type of thing is everywhere. It's not just, you know, in the major cities where it got its push. You know, do rappers like Jay-Z, um, nigga, um, uh, you think I'm gonna stop at the toes with your measly asses? Um, um, we don't know. He's oh, uh, think worry about your measly asses. We don't stop at the toes. We got easy passes. Fly line. You know what I'm saying? But a damn show was promotion. You, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, let me let me move over to another situation. Now, this is gonna break down um, that we read right there and larger context right now hold on let me bring this up i don't know if that can come up there um okay um let me bring this up right the african-american um delegation to abraham lincoln right now let's go it goes kate mauser She's the person who, you know, put this article together. Abraham Lincoln, August 1886, meeting with a delegation of black Washingtonians, um, Washingtonians was always been critically critical to those interested in addressing Lincoln's views on race and on African American's future in the United States. Right? Because when you, you know, sometimes people would give you something and you don't really analyze what's being said. You don't really um, study and understand um, you know, what, what's being presented in front of you, if you understand what I'm saying. So, 
when you really look at something and you critically evaluate it, what do you have on the table? Here's what we have on the table. At that meeting, because now I looked in, I found this article because as I was looking into um, the the aboriginals, right, or the aboriginists, whatever, the people who decided to, you know, acting like they were against, but they were all in one. Some people, they just wanted to get us, get rid of us, but keep an X amount of us for um, indigent servant servitude, you know what I'm saying? Us working for them in some type of way. So we they needed still an X amount, that's why they always provided a ghetto off to the side, you know, for the workers. It's like you got a house and you got your little worker, well, towns are set up in that same fashion. You know what I mean? Don't don't get it confused. So, um, you know, put the workers over here and all of the luxury and all of that over there. So, um, that's how I, I wound up looking it up because I wanted to know who were these um, five people. I believe it was four or five people that Lincoln had called to the White House to have this discussion of us being um, willing to go to, you know, Africa or Haiti or whatever, because a lot of people don't know that Haitian history either, but it's going to, I'm going to allude to it here and I can get into it deeper later, but I'll get into it. But um, as far as shipping people outwardly, getting them out of the country, you know, so um, I wanted to know that. I wanted to know who the hell were these people who, who, who gave this, this authorization. Right, so it says right here, it goes, um, let me see, I'll probably um, zoom it in better for y'all. It don't, it don't hurt, right, it don't hurt. Um, let me see here, bring this over, bring this over, maybe I can get y'all to see it more than I could possibly. Try to get as much in there as possible, you know what I mean? Um, okay, here we go. All right, so, um, Make sure, okay. So it goes, um, where we at? Where we at here? Um, at that meeting, Lincoln famously told the five delegates, You are, you and we are different races, and it was, and it was better for us both to be separated. Lincoln hoped the whatever the Cherokee um, region of what is now Panama would be in a, a spacious destination for African Americans whom he doubt would be able to enjoy prosperity and peace in the United States. This is the person that you're saying liberated the people. You're saying he liberated the people, and he's telling you, "Yo, listen, get out of here. You're not gonna, you're not gonna be safe here. You're not gonna be good." So when you see, when I see African Americans in America, or whatever title you wanna go by, complaining, I'm like, what part of this didn't you understand? You was told from the beginning. They don't even believe that you're going to be good here. They don't believe it. He, he's telling you to leave. Get the fuck out of here. I'm telling you. You know, so, you know, understand that, you know, the black abas abolish, um response to Lincoln's colonization purposes um, proposal is also well known. Okay. Men, now you gotta see, I got this in a different um, color. So this is men like Robert Purvis and Frederick Douglass denounced it, chain charging Lincoln with racism and insisting that African Americans should demand rights. Pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. Mm. Right, you hear me, you hear me? All right. Um, so, um, uh, 
you know, traffic around here and shit. Um, men like Robert Purvis and Frederick Douglass denounced it, charging Lincoln with racism and insisting that African Americans should demand rights and equality in the nation of um, equality in the nation of their birth. The coming months would reinforce the logic of their position. Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation and black men began enlisting in the U.S. Armed Forces, opening the way for African Americans' claims of full citizenship. Once again, dear Eidos people, you are staking a claim that is actually entitled for those people who were brought here. Not from the date that you saying this 15 whatever. That's not how um, reparations work. You actually wouldn't even be t entitled to this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But anyway, let me scroll down here because um, I know I had um, oh, yeah, here we go. Okay. So um, now that was all a part of the Abraham showing you the connections. I'm showing you the connections within these, these organizations in the plot to get you out of here. It was always deemed for you to have to go. You understand what I'm saying? It wasn't deemed for you to be here, so when you're making certain complaints, it's falling on deaf ear because they're gonna say you was warned and that was that. To an extent, rarely acknowledged in 1862, the capital was the center of national lobbying and debate about black immigration. This was largely the results of congressional policies. In April, Congress passed the District of Columbia Emancipation Act, which provided both for um, compensant um, emancipation of the capital's approximately 3,000 slaves and for the approximation of 100,000 in fund the settlement of those free and newly freed Africans. As may, as may desire to immigrate to the Republican of Haiti or Liberia or such other countries beyond the limits of the United States as president as the president may determine because the Abacupation Act left the this um the destination right, I'm gonna scroll past the footnotes here um for government um sponsored immigration um deter undeter undeter undermined the promotion of diverse colonization scheme flicked to Washington hoping to persuade the government to favor them with see I don't know what this logic it's log lag legacy, I don't know. Um as one prominent um component of Liberian immigration, see that's what they're trying to get you over there to Lib um, Liberia, um, put it. Um, this $100,000 is the carcass over which the turkey budgets are gathered together. The colonization bonanza scheme to grow even larger this summer when Congress appropriated an additional 500000 for colonization purposes, creating the fund of 600000 at the president's disposal basically what they're telling you is is they was hustling the system by using us if you know anything about the Wiggers and um, these other parties um, pardon me pardon me um, 
If you know anything about the Uyghurs and these um, other parties, you would know that, you know, um, what do you call them? They had the, um, not the filibusters. Um, pardon me, pardon me. Might as well light up while I'm waiting for the madness to slow down. Um, 600,000. Oh, yeah, so... You know, like any, any, like say if you got a war on crime or whatever, you get, you get these funding. They were taking that funding, basically letting it collect so they could turn around and use it for something else is basically what the charge was. Like, yo, y'all up here, y'all just front. That shit ain't going for that. You know what I'm saying? And it goes right here. Um, okay. I want to make sure you can see it. It goes, um. The government appropriation in the Lincoln administration keen interest in colonizing opened a new chapter in the long-standing debate among African Americans. See, meaning that you were using a group of people to invade another place. You understand what I'm saying? You you using this funding like 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 a um like the beginning of them um black them them black them black site programs and shit. We was we was one of those like the beginning attempts to that. You use us like like how they um did the um the Jews, basically, you know what I'm saying? Take them up and they and and uplift them and put them into a land and just you know let them be there you know what i mean so that's how they they attempted to do it so um for decades black northerners had discussed whether to leave the united states and light out uh, and light out on the project of racial uplift and anatomy, um, autonomy, where we at, and some other more friendly location. Over the, um, the autobellum period, African Americans support the immigration tended to raise in period of white anonymity towards free blacks and ebb when put, um, prospects for a future in the United States appear to improve. Meaning, every time black people seem to make some type of leeway, white people would step in and do whatever it takes to keep them down. Now mind you, this was being said back in the 1800s. Strange. So when you hear these people, even within our community, using this white logic of making excuses, what were they, what was their logic then? And how come it's still the same construction? That's the still the same balance, the still the same living within a certain means, it's still everything. And you still got a certain group who will pull through and tell everybody else no, it's because of this bootstrap thing. Now, I'm not saying in today's time you don't have an opportunity to open up a new lane because of digital and now you have, um, you know, the pandemic. So if you can design things that cater to that, you got a chance to, you know, um, restructure yourself. still don't change government and all of them other things, all of them white controlled systems that can still fuck you up. Depending on what you're doing, there's always a way to bring you down. You know what I'm saying? Over, okay, uh, um, for instance, um, for instance, interest had grown in the 19 in the 1850s when developments such as the 1850 um fugitive slave act and the 1875 um dred scott decision made many northern americans north 
Northern African Americans fear that their safety and despair for their future in the United States. Although the number of Northern African Americans who actually left the United States remain relatively small, the, de um, the debate about um, immigration um, was instant and hard fought. And, wait, 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 instant and hard fought, my fault. Um, instant and hard fought. Oh, and it revealed sharp disagreements among African Americans about the relative merit of continuing to engage with American institutions and claiming American citizenship versus abandoning the country for better prospects elsewhere. So, basically it was those who were free at one time and when bills passed to catch fugitives and all of that, they got nervous. And so they, it was like a, um, like a chokehold, forcing them to wanna leave. Because remember, the, the objective was to get them to do it on their own accord. You know, that's the main objective, to always keep their hands clean. So you have to convince the people without, you know, it's like the mob putting the pressure on you without looking like they put in the pressure on you. That's how you got like the system today in the black community of no snitching. No snitching is really, um, I can do anything that we claim white people do to you and don't say nothing. You know, I, I don't I don't subscribe to the no snitching. I subscribe to like the rats, meaning that if you in any type of organization, um, I don't know what loyalty is, so I, I don't I can't tell you what your loyalty is, but um your honor is supposed to be whatever um that secrecy and those things that is entrusted in you, meaning that if, if you decide to walk away, I, I would hope that your honor was such intact that nobody would have to fear that you would talk, right? But depending on how far you indulge in something, that's a strange request, meaning like, you know, murder and stuff like that, you know, in the black community today, we act like that's something you're supposed to just catch. You know what I'm saying? Like, whereas, and that's the reason why snitching and all of that can be prevalent due to the fact that it's not promoted in our um, culture as that's something to avoid. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, um, white people I have that I, I hope you don't, and like Cedric said, I hope you don't, and we on that, I wish you would. You know, like approach, and that's where um, a large downfall is coming in there. I'm being honest with you. You know, a large downfall is coming in, you know, based on that mentality of just out. You know, like I, I remember saying in a rhyme one time, um, only way to be above the law is to respect the law. So if they do, if they say do 65, do 64. You understand what I'm saying? Meaning that, you know, just respect it. You know what I mean? You know, doing 90 on the highway, knowing you dirty as hell just doesn't make sense. Like, you know, you above a system that's set up when even they know to stay within those guidelines. You understand what I'm saying? And, and, and so um, that's what I say when I, when I, um, I talk about um, the slave mentality of convincing you to throw yourself to the wolves through the promotions of, of these things where that's not their promotion. So that's the reason why you don't see the chaos. And it sure will say that it's um, 
reporting but the truth is that's what they demanded you to say in order for you to get put out so then it's hard to um argue that because it's like um you digging yourself in your own hole everything that you fearing you creating you know what i'm saying it's like and you can see that evident in today with the youth and their conflicts they search they say certain things in the albums and the in the in the mixtapes and they see immediate response that's destructive you know what i'm saying so you you know that's how i um it, it's easy for me to break it down but then it goes like this. Um, so this is the reason why, you know, a lot. And then let me stick to that point real quick about the red and the red zone up here. Now, you know, looking for this better prospect, like I said, is the same thing that we always promote now. It's like they, they like I said, you got to understand the, the hoodwink. You know what I mean? Once they decided that they couldn't get rid of you, well, they knew that they wasn't going to be able to get rid of you. You understand what I'm saying? And they already set in place what it is. So on one side, you can say, yeah, um, Abraham Lincoln was fucking with their money. Get your hands out my pocket type of a thing. We already got this set up. This is what, and you trying to tell them to go. While you got another side that's like, well, yeah, some of them got to go because we ain't going to be able to control all of them anyway. And that's why you see today when I, when I, or the day when I made the show about the gangs and all of these different organizations set up to, um, to, um, keep you in a, um, a certain position or to bump you off get rid of the outfits those who's a problem and redesign this to be you know the beta movement you know what i mean so um i'm about to don't worry i'm about to um, close this up but i wanted to um now when it says in again 1862 three um demonstrations of for black immigration were under consideration. Liberia, Haiti, and Central America, particularly um, the Providence of Chikiri and New Ghana, um, Granda. Granda. Um, each one had its own history and meaning for African Americans. Most controversial um, destination between Liberia um, was Liberia. Um, which was established in 1822 as an enterprise of the American Colonization Society, ACS. The ACS was a colonization slaveholder and anti-slave activist who wanted to diminish, right, um, black population of the United States, North American, North American, North, Northern African American had long questioned the motive of ACS members who sometimes advocated forced deportation of free blacks and often in, um, inspound racist views. Um, their doubts about La Liberia were height. Their, mm, <laughs> um, their, I got, I got the, the um, so this is why I haven't been doing shows too. Lately, I don't know, it's just been happening more, but I don't know. Um, hold on. It goes, hold on. I got the, I got the alarm, and I don't want to, just in case I have to do some editing, I, I'd rather make it as simple as possible. So I'm going to let this alarm go off for a second. You know, somebody going to shut their shit off. See, what I tell you? That's what I like. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like back in the days where a motherfucker had to walk all the way to his car. So that shit might be going off for a minute. The motherfucker don't even want to get out of his bed. He like, man, fuck that shit. You know what I'm saying? To the neighbors call him up like, yo, you better shut that shit off or I'm going to fucking blow your car up. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, now as you remember, I brought up the, um, the ACS. That was like the number one part that I brought up because I wanted to show you that these organizations were set up 
and you know they were playing a double-edged sword. They were they was running game, so they and they initiated members, you know, and of the black community to perform this swindle of aiding and abetting, removing and and. It, and Now, when you also look at this organization, you would also see that it's beyond just the United States. That's the, how they was able to get the Caribbeans, you know, the Moors and all of them, you know, to sign on board. And like I said, it's a whole different story and I'm gonna show you how it works when you, it's easier to see once you look at Liberia. You'll understand the whole tactic. I'm not gonna get into the Liberia part today, but after this and you, this information right here, when I take you into Liberia, you're gonna understand because it's all connected to this, as you can see. So, um, um, who sometimes advocated forced deportation of free blacks and often insp uh, imp imposed racist views. These, um, their doubts about Liberia were heightened by reports from immigrants um, their describing difficult conditions and widespread disease and mortality. North Northern African American views about Liberia improved somewhat after 1847 when the country became independent from the ACS and black immigrants began governing the nation amid talks of the United the US expanding diplomatic recognition of Liberia for the first time in early 1862. The Liberian government sent commissioners to Washington to lobby for a share of the colonization appropriation and um, recruit settlers. Please understand what that means right there, people. Listen. Right? Let's get into right. I'm going to take you to amid talks of the U.S. extended diplomatic recognition of Liberia for the first time, meaning that, like, now you are, you know, acknowledged as a free nation. Like, you know, um, you, you can sustain on itself and you, you fell under their fold. You understand what I'm saying? So now, after that has taken place for the first time early, right, the Liberian government sent commissioners to Washington to lobby for a share. This is the most important part. The colonization appropriation and recruit settlers, meaning that the money that was you know, given to basically invade, you know, they want they want a piece of it. Like, nah, you gotta you gotta break us off. You know, and you know, you you gotta aid us in basically taking over other people's shit. You know, so understand, you know, what's happening over there with the aiding and abettance of us with this new slave mentality. And I'm gonna break down how it's gonna be proven to be a slave mentality over there. Like I said, when I do my Liberia report, it's gonna be deep. Um, for me, it's deep, you know, cause it, it's a, um, a eye opener into a tactic. Like these were the things that became clear to me and you know, when other things were looked back upon. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so the prospect of immigration to Haiti had a very different history and means uh, and meaning for African Americans in 1862. 
Haiti had emerged from French colony rule as the world's first independent black Republican in the Western Hemisphere, first black um, um, post-colonial nation. The nation itself was thus a source of um, inspiration and pride for African Americans. Huh. So, uh, I'm hoping I'm heard. Okay, let me see. I'm just checking to see if I'm being heard. Um, sorry. Um, let's see. Here it goes. The nation itself was just a source of inspiration and pride for African Americans. In the 1820s, the Haitian government had appealed to African Americans to settle there. Right, so when you talk to a lot of Ados people and they try and to alienate, um, um, you know, Islanders as if they're not natives or they're not entitled to anything. Remember, they shipped you out of their country to other countries, and so we are related, whether you like it or not. We're all a part of this giant scheme. So, you know, um, that's just what it is. And I keep saying that because I hear a lot of these Eidos, um do it. I don't want to, like I said, I, I don't want to get caught up in this Freemasonic new squabbling. So I'm just throwing it out there. But, you know, I'm just, you know, I don't want to get caught up in it. Um, so what we got? We going um, um had appealed to um, and there, um, have settled there, creating a flurry of debate in the United States. Haitian immigration gained renewed population during the 1859s in 1860, when U.S.-based immigration advocates, advocate, um, um, Based immigration advocates led by J, um, James R um, Redep, um, a white <laughs> ab uh, ab abolitionist, right, working with the Haitian government to encourage settlement. Results were disappointing, however. By 1861, word reached African Americans, right. Um, this is all um, footnotes. Um, African Americans that immigrants to, uh, um, um, to Haiti were often treated um, shabbily by local locals, and that the Haitian government did far less than promise to accommodate them. Nevertheless. Um, Haitian immigration was still a going concern in spring of 1882, and Redep himself sought to recruit new settlements. <coughs> excuse me, um, to recruit new settlers from among those who would be freed by the District of Columbia's Emancipation Act. So, what this is telling you, people, is before you were free, they had already had a setup to get rid of you or to keep you, but to keep you within a certain condition. So, when you say that racism isn't systematic, it shows you from here, it's systematic. You cannot um, debate with systematic racism. You, and you cannot debate that we have been aiding and abetting in this system. When, when you look up, um, I'm, I'm, like, I think I did the show on, on um, um, Marcus Garvey, and you would see him connected to the same organization. 
And when you look at Marcus Garvey, you would know that him, Elijah Muhammad, Nobu Drew Ali, all of them were all connected. They were all connected. So when you look at this, you, you see what's going on. You see that it was a it's a system set up to to be controlled by um by them through us. With the promise of you being able to, you know, um grow on your own. I'm going to put this back to me real quick. Slide this up here like that. Right? Probably got some, got some smoke in the lizards. So, um, to understand the making of a slave is to give him this dialogue of him being made into this man. He was this savage, living this savage life. You know what I'm saying? Doing savage things. So he makes him upright. Let me go back to the pictures over here so when I say this, you can understand what is being said. All right, so hold on. All right. So, like I said, he he's training you to believe that you are a savage, and he's teaching you to be this upright person. They use these devices like, okay, the I mean, the Jews used it on the um the um Christians, right? You know, the Greeks or whatever you want to say. They used it on them, right, to control them. Now that same group is using it, you know, and expanded it. You know, to anybody who has a voice since they opened the door of having a voice. So now the black man, the voice meaning voting. So once you have a vote, once you vote, you have a voice, right? That's why everybody should vote because you have a voice, but they're hijacking your voice. So that's why, like... It's like a double-edged sword. It's like you want to support voting because it, it supports your voice. You know what I'm saying? It represents your voice. But your your voice is being hijacked through, like, the the, um, the electoral college and stuff like that. You know, um, so it's a catch-22. But, like I said, to keep you to being upright, you know, they use this system of advancement and, and and to be upright meaning whether it be, oh, if you ain't got money, you ain't got nothing to say and, you know, because those are the things that can allow you to be viewed as this high esteem, you know, esteem. But you got to play their game. You understand what I'm saying? It's like when the legal system wasn't even letting black people, you know, being lawyers, even have dreadlocks. They're dictating you in a legal system. If they can dictate you to even on how you can even participate in the legal system, how are you really participating in that system? If they can tell you Right, you need to look this way, right? And and you've seen it even in the movies. If you pay attention, you might see like, you know, uh, um, an attorney come in there, and, and they'll be like, counselor, um, this is not appropriate, you know, attire, and you know, he'll be like, oh, you know, I'm sorry, your honor, or whatever the case may be. So there's a dictation. Right? 
there's a way that they are dictating how you to present yourself and they are the ones who dictate how you get there. So the system is not, um, you know, working for you if it's already set up for you to be submissive from the beginning. A white person can come in there with wild crazy hair. You walk in there with dreadlocks, it's a problem. Big fucking problem in thinking that way and accepting that type of um, limitation of you to be able to represent yourself. You know, so that means that right there, you are putting yourself in somebody else's... Um, um, empowerment, like they, 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 um, they, they are imposing an authority upon you to your every every walk because now you have been trained. So that's how you walk out the door. You 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 feel you earned that to get inside that, and so now you subliminally take on that belief system which most likely you was indoctrinated in through probably, you know, um, I'm thinking, um, what is the academics, the real acad, because I know um, Sigmas and Zetas are like the real great academics for the females, I'm thinking, you know, whatever, but for the guys, you know, they got the academics um, fraternities as well. So, um, like I was saying, these are these are the teachings. These are the teachings, and which is subliminal, but those teachings are psychological, convincing you one, the initiate, you know that you you have, you know, earned this, and so now you're gonna take a sense of, you know, ownership in that. You know what I mean? And if anybody challenges that, all of the stuff that you did or sold out for or whatever, you're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna defend that. So that's where we have this, you know, this um, classation um, um, racism within the community, you know, and because that's based on, you know, shades of who you, what color you are, and what doors you can get in, and you know what I mean? Especially back in those days, and it's still going to sustain. Now, you might look out more for your cousins and sure that opens the door, but they make sure them numbers are low, you know? And so, you know, like these, these like I said right here, you know, teaching you how to stand out erect. You know, when you're standing on your square, you're supposed to be erect. You understand what I'm saying? And let me see right here for the zoom in, see what we got up on top. Um, before bowing and bowing, this is how you're supposed to bow. Have you noticed like in, um, say like in drama, especially <coughs> because that's how Freemasons, that's how Freemasons, <laughs> excuse me. That's how Freemasonry works within telling a story. So then, you know, these are, you know, the ways in order to spot them. You know, I'm trying to teach you how to um, recognize them. You know what I mean? And like I said, it's through storytelling. So this is about, you know, a, um, a group of people who um, are basically um, beating you you know, like you heard us saying, beat them over the head. This is basically that. You know, you being bombarded with this information and they're teaching you how to perform it. So this image right here looks like this, but in actuality, it's a lesson on how to perform it. Like meaning that the guy in the back he he does these type of things and but it's not physical it could be mental you know what i'm saying the the attack the words and the things that you say to attack their um belief system and like you might see the gentle hand and from the back but an aggressive approach from the front these are tactics you understand what i'm saying these are tactics 
and they're being taught on how to perform it. You know? And so I'm going to end it with that. Like I said, I hope you understand, and I hope you learned something about the making of a sellout, the making out of a, um, a slave in the, in the sense of um, answering the Willie Lynch, you know, um, letters. You know what I'm saying? To answer the Willie Lynch letters is if it's true, yes it is. And this is how it's being performed even to this day. You know? So if you was wondering if the Willie Lynch letters were true and if the person really wrote it, if there was a Willie Lynch or not, it's, it's in the story that the, the message is given. So was Willie Lynch letters true? Did the person who presented to you did his do his job and it going viral and it spreading the way it did? Yes, he did. If that is reverse Freemasonry, kudos to you. You did your job. I'm just here to break it down so that way the job was completed. Peace, people. This is your boy Juice Wanna. with another episode of Smoke and Jokes. When we discuss today's topics while <clears throat> when we discuss today's topics while indulging in the greatest of herbal essences. And today's show was brought to you by no other than 50 Shades of Grape. I mean, make no mistake, there is 50 Shades of Grape. On the left. Peace, people.